Welcome to Advent of Vim 2025, day 13. Today we're going to talk about Vimrc basics. The main reason for this video is some feedback I got on some of the earlier videos from you. Some people suggested that it might be easier to follow along if we'd use a vanilla installation without any configuration of Vim. My first response was just to post the Vimrc I was using for the series, but then I thought maybe it's a good idea to start fresh and create a Vim configuration from scratch, starting with some basics, and we'll also cover some more advanced stuff in a few of the following videos, I guess. But before we get started, special thanks go out to my YouTube channel members. We've got five of them now, and also the super chatters and super thankers here, and of course my GitHub sponsors. Thank you all, it's really appreciated. Hi. My name is Marco. Let's get started. So we're really doing a fresh start here. As you can see, there are no Vim config files in my home directory. And also if we look at the config directory, we see there's also no Vim configuration. Of course, there's a new Vim configuration, but we didn't use that in the series. So let's start Vim and see what happens. So this is plain old Vim with no configuration here. First of all, where should we put this configuration? I showed you two locations in the beginning, but if you want to know exactly where you couldn't put your vimrc file, that's the configuration file you need, you can use the version command. And you can see on the bottom here, there are actually a few locations where you can put your vim configuration. First of all, there's a system vimrc file. You probably won't change that. But then you can use the user vimrc file in your home directory directly. Or you can use alternate locations like the .vim folder in your home directory with the vimrc file here. Or you can put it into the xtg config home, which is usually located in your home directory in the .config directory. And then you have a subdirectory here called vim and vimrc is the actual file where you do the configuration. I tend to use the xdg config home because there are a lot of other configuration things in there. And so we'll do this here as well. So let's start with something really simple. We can set options inside this file. That's actually the thing you can also do in the command line here with set. So for example, if I wanted to see line numbers on the left side of the file here in the gutter, the option for that is number, or you could also shorten it with nu. Then hit enter and you see this line number here, but this won't be here if we restart Vim, right? So let's actually use this open buffer here as our vimrc file and set this option here. And we can see if we restart Vim, if this actually worked. Uh, but first we have to save this, of course. So escape to get out of insert mode. And then we'll use the W to write this buffer to the disk. And we're going to give it a path where we want to save it. So vimrc here in this directory. Whoops, I didn't create this directory yet, so I can't write this file. So let's do that quickly here. And because we're already been professionals here, we're going to use the exclamation mark to just run a shell command here. Make the, let's use the P flag. So then we can make sure that even if the config directory wouldn't exist, this would be created as well. And now we'll try our write command again. Let's quit Vim here. Whoops, another spoiler of the last episode, but there will be more ways to quit. So let's just start Vim again here. And we can see we've got the line numbers right from the start without having to set the option manually. So let's open up the vimrc file we just created. I will show you that we can use a variable here for that. It's called my vimrc. And this expanded to this value here, and that's the actual first configuration file or user configuration file Vim finds from this list we saw before. And now we can do more stuff here. So I also like to set relative line numbers. I'm just going to use R and U. This is the shortcut for that. Now that we can actually see what relative line numbers here do, let's just add a few more lines here for a greater effect. Let's add a comment here. Comments in Vim start with a double quote. So maybe if you watch some of my other videos, you know that I like to write something like like and subscribe and also hype. This is new actually. And let's add another line. Thank you so much. And let's go and write this file. And now that we've actually written these options to our configuration file, it didn't get automatically reloaded, but you can easily reload it with a simple command here without having to restart Vim. It's called source. You can write SO for short for that. And we're gonna use the my vimrc variable again. And then maybe you noticed here, the line numbers changed here. This, this one number got pushed back to the left side. This is the current number and the relative numbers you can see here on the, on the right side here. And if we move around here, you see these relative line numbers change. 
So I still feel a little bit groggy because of my unplanned dentist appointments yesterday and today. So that's why I'm gonna wrap up this one here. I hope tomorrow I will be a little bit more energized again. So the first part of the obligatory reminder about liking and so on is already written here. Please also consider the YouTube membership options or the GitHub sponsors or Kofi links. Thank you so much for watching. See you around and take care.